Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 10, reading documentation. Okay, so, so far you have learned a ton of HTML, a ton of CSS, and as you've seen by now, there are a ton of features in both of these languages, okay? And something you should know about these languages is they are living and breathing languages. By that, I mean that they continue to be updated, okay? The W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, they are the organization that's responsible for updating and developing these languages. Right now, the most current version of HTML and CSS is HTML5 and CSS3. So the numbers indicate the versions of these languages. Okay, just like we get new phones and new gaming systems, these languages also get updated. Okay, and so the best way to learn about the new features in these updated um versions is to read the documentation for these languages. Okay, so in this lesson, what we're going to be focusing on is the importance of documentation and where you can find documentation for HTML, CSS. Okay, so the first exercise is style the table. You will need to use the docs tab for this exercise. And good thing is that we've been using this throughout the lessons we've been doing and we just used it in the previous lesson. So this should be familiar. Okay, this is the start of a web colors table. You should add two more colors chosen either by using the color picker in the docs or looking at the list of 140 color names provided under the color name section of the docs. Then you're going to add a rule for the table that personalizes the table's border. You should change how thick the border is, what color the border is, and you should style the border. We're also going to use the docs to see which attributes we need to set to achieve these goals. For a full list of CSS properties, use this link. Okay, again, this should look familiar. If you did the last exercise, we're gonna go ahead and use it for style the table. Let's get started. Okay, so when we run this, we'll notice that the table has a set of three colors and our job as we just read in the exercise is to add two more rows okay so if we go down here we'll see the comment for that remember comments are invisible so you can leave that in or delete it it doesn't make a difference okay so um, to add a table row I hope you remember this from our table exercise we're gonna need the TR tag and since each table row has three table data cells we're gonna need three TD tags okay so TD is going to be the cell for the row okay and we need three of them so i'm just going to add these down and then since we're doing two more colors i'm just going to go ahead and copy paste that all right so if we run that we can see that our table now should have two more rows and our job is to fill it in with two new colors using the docs tab okay so we've used this before it should be familiar okay we're going to go over to docs and you can either use the color picker or color names i'm going to go ahead and use the color picker for the first color I put in. Okay, so you can open up the color picker by clicking that color square sample, and you can select any color in the spectrum here. Okay, so I really love green, it's my favorite color. I'm gonna find a nice green color I can use that I like. Okay, that looks good. Okay, if you hit enter, you'll get the hex code for that color. Okay, very nice and neat. You can just copy that, control C. And we'll go over and fill in the information for this. So the first cell is going to hold the name of the color. Okay, the color picker isn't gonna give you a name, but you can fill one in um, based on what it looks like. This looks like a nice, cool mint green to me, so I'm gonna use that for the name. And then I'm going to paste in the hex code. And then finally, notice the last cell is just colored in. So what we're gonna do, just as you see above, is give our last cell an ID equal to the name of that color. Okay, and then we'll go over to the style sheet and write in a rule for that ID that basically fills in the background color. Okay, and since that whole table data cell is holding that ID, we should see it fill in with that color. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and run that. Beautiful, okay, so you're gonna add one more color to your table, all right, and then don't forget, we also wanna make some changes to the table to personalize the border. Okay, so we are going to basically use the table as the selector because we know that's the tag, and we're going to use some border properties. Okay, so if we go over to our docs, and we look for border 
we should be able to find the properties we need. Okay, so I know I want to change the border style, the border width, and the border color, so I'm going to look for those properties. Okay, so I can see that we have the border style property, so I'm just going to add that in. And the border style property takes either solid, dotted, dashed, or double as the value. So I'm gonna go with a solid border. Okay, next I want to change the border width. Okay, so I can also see that's here, right here in my border properties. So border width. Okay, maybe something like five pixels. And then finally, the border color. Okay, so for border color, you can use a name, you can use the color picker, it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna go with green, uh, my favorite color, I'm kinda biased. All right, so let's make sure we got all of our requirements in. Okay, border thickness, border color, border style, I think that should do it, let's run it and see what we get. Okay, this looks good. Again, your table is going to look a little different because you're going to choose different colors. Hopefully, you don't have to choose the same colors as me. And remember that for the table, you can fill it in with color names. You don't need to use the color picker, but I practice using that if you haven't already. You'll find it all in the Docs tab and or if you like, you can also use the full list of properties here. Okay, so if you go over to CSS, um, reference page on W3C, you should be able to scroll down to color. Okay, I wanna show this to you really quickly. So color, basically, HTML recognizes, okay, it's not on this page, but I know there's a link to it in the docs, so I wanna make sure that, oh yes, full list of names here. Okay, it's on the W3C schools, I just, um, didn't want to dig around it for it. Okay, so it's on the HTML color names. HTML recognizes 140 different color names. So that's still a decent amount of options. You can totally use color names if you'd like. Uh, the color names have a corresponding hex code. So there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to coding, but I just wanted to point this out since it's an option as well. Okay, very nice work on our first reading documentation exercise. If you have any questions, please leave it down below. Nice job, everyone. Thank you.